Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Back at work, and so is the president. He spends many of his weekends, as you know, away from Washington, including part of this past weekend. And when he's not at the White House, there is a massive military effort to keep him safe. The entire area frozen. One of the biggest threats from the air, planes getting too close. So what really happens if a rogue aircraft flies near the president and just won't leave the airspace? This morning, we are getting rare access up close with fighter jets in action. President Trump is on the move, spending time away from the White House, from his Mar-a-Lago resort to his golf course in New Jersey and his home in New York City. 51 days so far, even this weekend, spending Sunday at his golf course in Virginia. On the ground, heavy security you can see. In the air, it's just as intense. But most of us never get to see it until now. The Air National Guard protecting the skies and giving us rare access. When the president moves around, the Federal Aviation Administration puts a temporary flight restriction in place and then we defend it. So what happens if an unidentified aircraft flies into the no-fly zone right above the president of the United States? We've set up a demo today with this Cessna and the Air National Guard. I'm going to be inside of this Cessna and we're going to be going rogue. We're going to fly into that no-fly zone, and we're going to see how the Air National Guard does it. They scramble the fighter jets that come right near us and how they get us down to the ground and the president safe. Let's board and see what happens. We barrel down the runway. And take off. We're off. Flying for miles and miles until... Okay, we've just entered the no-fly zone now. Our pilots aren't talking to air traffic control, ignoring their calls to reach them. That triggers an alarm at the Air National Guard base. These fighter pilots scrambling to their jets. They're on alert and ready to take action 24 hours a day. Today, racing to their F-16s, suiting up, climbing on board, and rushing to the runway. Taking off to intercept our rogue Cessna. Reaching the target in just minutes. This is the view from the F-16. That's my Cessna right there. Whoa! You can actually hear, I don't know if you can hear it on camera, you can hear that fighter jet coming by. I mean, there's no way you don't hear this or notice it. Coming up on the left side of our plane. Uh, that is as, as intimidating as you would think it would be. Look at that fighter jet, he's right off our wing. Another F-16 swooping in on the right, calling us on aviation frequencies. You have been intercepted if you hear this transmission, down to the radio call and rock your wing. He wants us to identify ourselves. We're a rogue aircraft, remember, for this demonstration, so we're not going to respond at all and see what this fighter jet does. The fighter right on our wing now, scanning us inside. What is he trying to do? He's trying to figure out who we are, who's inside, what we're up to. And he's trying to make radio contact and tell us to do what? Follow him? That's correct. The fighters want to escort us out of the area, but we still don't respond. So the F-16 makes a bold move. Swooping in right there. Look at how close he gets. Whoa, he's crossing right in front of us. It's called the headbutt maneuver, and you can see why. Watch again. The F-16 crosses right in front, just feet from us. Hard to miss, and that's the point. That's a pretty aggressive maneuver. He's just trying to get our attention. Remember, this is restricted airspace right above the president's vacation home. You are ordered to turn to the northwest. The fighter jet giving us one last warning, turning away, hoping we follow. If after all of this, the pilot still won't listen, the plane won't leave the airspace, will you shoot them down? If required, we'll execute the rules of engagement per the commander of the North American Aerospace Defense Command. And yes, we would do that. Shoot the plane down so they can't get to the president. If it meets the rules of engagement, yes, we would to defend the airspace. With the president traveling so much, it gets expensive. Still unclear exactly how much all of this costs. The government watchdog group telling us they're actually going to release new numbers this week. By the way, the Air National Guard doesn't just do this mission to protect the president. The same rules apply to big events like the U.N. General Assembly and the Super Bowl. In fact, guys, since 9-11, they have responded. They have scrambled fighter jets in the U.S. to 5,000 possible oh, threats. So yeah. this happens a lot more often than we think it does. And those guard units that do it mm -hmm. are awesome. You're <laughs>
my yeah, brother and my nice job. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.